All right, this is the second part of our uh, example on working with a cantilevered beam. Remember, we have a cantilevered beam with a uh, weight on the end of it of 930 newtons. And we're going to finish the problem up here. Now, in the last, uh, first part of the clip, I had this written out as the expression for moment. Now, one thing I did is I've been kind of not telling you the whole story on the units. I'm going to write this out more carefully. 930 has, that number has units. That's actually newtons. And there's, uh, let's see how I'm going to write this. There's an X on there. That's going to be in meters minus 1860 newton meters. Now, I'm not going to carry those units through exactly here because that's a really awkward thing to do in the middle of a function, but we're going to remember that that has, between that and that, they both have the units of newton meters, a moment, which is what that needs to be. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and look at the governing expression. This is the, the expression for beams that you see in all the textbooks. This is a very, very well-known expression. And it looks a little intimidating. I mean, it's a differential equation. Well, it turns out it's a really easy differential equation, a differential equation in name only. So let's think about this. Forget about the fact that that's a derivative right now. Let's just say this is something we don't know. It turns out this is curvature. We could actually replace this with C of X if we wanted to. That is a function we just figured out. That's this up here. E and I are both stiffness terms. Remember, E is stiffness due to the type of material we we're going to use, and I is stiffness due to the cross-sectional shape. Well, if I were to rearrange this just a little bit, I'd put the thing we don't know, this curvature right here, on one side of the equal sign, and all the stuff we do know on the other side of the equal sign. Well, that's like any other expression, so let's do that. That doesn't sound too intimidating. Okay, all I did was divide through by EI. So we know what moment is. We figured out that using the shear moment diagram. We know E and I. Those are just numbers, those we have up here. And this thing over here, curvature. Well, I don't want to know curvature. I want to know deflection. Well, if I integrate curvature once, I get slope. And if I integrate slope once, I get deflection. Because if I go the other way, if I take, if I know the deflection, I integrate it once to get slope, or sorry, take the derivative once to get slope, take the derivative again to get curvature. So we're just going to work reverse here, and reverse is the integral. So there's everything over here I can write in terms of x or a constant, and I'm integrate, we'll be integrating here in a minute with respect to x. So this is just an integration. Yeah, this is technically a differential equation, but it's a really easy one. Okay? So what we're going to do here, actually let me write it up here. dy dx, that's slope. You may, you may sometimes see it written out this way. This prime and that uh, dy dx, those are uh, two different ways of writing the same thing. Okay. Well, e and i are just constants, so I'm going to leave them here. and I'm actually going to leave them as e and i just because they're easier to write down this way. And I'm going to integrate that thing right there. So I'm going to write 930x minus 1860. Now remember these have this expression has units of newton meters, and we're going to need that later. And I have to integrate it with respect to something. So, we'll write dx. Now, dx is a distance. It's got units. It's got units of meters. Remember, dx is an infinitesimally small distance, but it's a distance, so it's got units of meters here. The last thing we need to know is we need to know some endpoints. Well, it's tempting to say 0 to 2 because that's the end of the beam. That's how long the beam is. If I do this, what comes out in there is going to be a number, not a function. Well, I want this to be a function of x. I, I really want this. Well, if I put a 2 there, I'm not going to get a function. I'm going to get a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that an x up there. That way I can put the endpoint in later if I want to. I'm just, I don't need to know what that number is. It's a number. don't know what it is yet. So I'll just put an x to stand in for that number. Well, this is pretty easy to write down, so I'm going to just go ahead here and write dy dx was 1 over ei. Remember, this is outside the integral sign, so the integration didn't change it any. Well, let's see, that's 465 x squared, is x squared over 2, minus 1860x. 
there we go. So the units are still holding here. This, this is, uh, had units of newtons times meters squared. This was newton meters times meters. So, so far my units are newton meters squared. Okay, let's take it one more step. If I integrated once to go from there to there, if I integrate again, if I integrate the slope, I'm going to get displacement, which is what I want. Okay, so I'm going to leave that EI outside there again, and I'm going to do the exact same thing Same thing I did before. All right? And so when you work this out, I've got my little cheat sheet down here to make sure I don't get this wrong. That would be embarrassing. And I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. 155x cubed minus. Hey, there we go. That's it. So that's our expression now. This is correct. And if we want to find the expression for, uh, let's see, deflection at the end of the beam, well, I've got deflection everywhere along the beam. I can figure it out however I want. So if I work this out, if I plug in EI, and EI, by the way, it's a good number to have here. Let's write it over. Hey, let me write it over here. I equals, let's see, 3.5156 times, uh, that's the wrong number. It is, there we go, sorry about that, 3.5156, okay, that's going to be Newton meters squared. Okay, so there we go, I've got EI. And this is going to be in uh, Newton meters cubed, right? So it's going to come out to Newton to, to meters, I should say. And so y at x equals two turns out to be zero. I'm sorry, negative minus zero point zero seven zero five meters, or minus seventy point five millimeters. And if you go look up the uh, stock expression that's in all the books, you'll find this. And I'll write this down for you here real quick. Okay, that's the expression that's in all the books. If we were to write this in terms of W, that's a negative right now because I'm pointed down. If I were to write this in terms of W in ten instead of 930 and L instead of 2 meters and carry out all this, that's what I'd get. If you plug all the right numbers in, including the weight and all this other stuff, this expression gives you that number. So we're done.